go. Hello, everybody. Oh, let me get this just a little better. There we go. So right here, I have got a TiVo Tarantula Pro, and my main camera is not showing or not showing any movement. There we go. Is it there? Okay, good. Now it is. That was weird. So um, I've sent this TiVo Tarantula Pro. This is sent to me from Banggood. I'd like to thank them for sending this to me. This is for a uh, unboxing and review. Uh, so uh, if you want to see what uh, what it takes to put one of these together, this will be the stream for you. Uh, hopefully in a few days, well, maybe a weekish, I'll have a couple of prints that I can also share with everybody. Uh, I'm going to be heading up to a buddy's house up in Seattle this weekend, so I won't be around to put this through its um, put it through its its paces coming up because I'm going to be out of town. Uh, so it'll be a little while before I get some stuff up on it. But I definitely want to get this built. I want to get it running so when I come back to town, I can immediately throw some models on and get it printing. Uh, I may throw one of the war layer uh, models. I usually, uh, whenever I start a new, or whenever I get a new printer, I always throw one of these crates on the printer to kind of test it out. And unfortunately, this one, I had some issues. This was the first print on uh, the, one of the AlphaWise printers, and it split off. But I was still trying to figure out how to dial in this um, this material. But the print actually ended up coming out pretty good, except, you know, it splits. But later prints have not had that problem. I just had to increase the temperature a little bit uh, so that it would uh, adhere to each other. So generally, this is the first print, or one of the very first prints, I put on um, a new printer. Um, Greg Guland, uh, Greg from Florida, he calls it the uh, Terrain Benchy, and I agree with him. That's one of the reasons why I really like it. So this comes from Warlayer, and coincidentally, Warlayer just started a new uh, Kickstarter today. This is his fourth one, and the fourth one that I've funded. So I highly recommend it. Andrew's amazing designer, and his stuff is awesome, especially if you really like um, 40K or Kill Team. Oh my God, his stuff's perfect for kill, my Kill Team table. Um, love it. I still need to print out a bunch more so I can really make it look a lot better. Um, I need to quit saying I'm here. So, so yeah, so this is, so let me get back to this. So this is the Tiva Tarantula. I'm going to be putting it together live on the stream. Hopefully it's not going to be too horrifyingly painful. Uh, oh, just realized this tool's back here. That's a convenient tool to have to get things straightened up. So without further ado, uh, let's get this started again. Thank you to Bing Good for sending this over for an unbiased review. Um, I really, uh, companies sending these really make it that I can do these reviews and get the different printers out there in the community that when people have questions, uh, we can answer. I can answer them and. I think I opened the bottom. I did open the bottom. Whoops. It looked like the top. All the packing packing labels were on this side. That's what threw me. Okay. Uh, so everything fell out. That's why it's a little off. So, we'll turn it so let's see how this looks. Okay. And around here. There we go. This looks like the way to open a package. Here we go. So you've got the TiVo uh, Y carriage, or the carriage here. Wow, all these pieces and parts, all the bags. I do like how most of these bags are labeled. Give them art, looks like. Now, for me, this is kind of coming full circle. My very first 3D printer, what got me into 3D printing, was a, a TiVo Tarantula. So this is the second printer I'll have had that is based on that name. My original, I ended up selling to a buddy of mine, which I really am glad that he got because I really did not want to get rid of my very first 3D printer. But... I had too many 3D printers, so I had to get rid of one, and that was kind of the older one. And so 
I was really happy that I was able to sell that to a buddy of mine. Uh, and, I can, and I know that it still is printing terrific scenery for war games. So, it's all that. More screws. This is a very thin metal, well, sheet metal. And I was sent the wrong plug, but nah, I have spares of US plugs, so not a big deal. I can just toss that. Uh, it does look like it comes with a spare Bowden tube. So if one goes out, a uh, goodie bag, or, well, maybe not goodie bag. You've got a uh, USB. Uh, you've got a new spatula. Uh, here are some more these. Uh oh, and the lead screw. It's right there. <coughs> so I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. And. Huh. I was kind of expecting instructions. Maybe they're, all the instructions are online. Let's see. Or on a card of some sort. One of the issues with going into these fairly blind is I don't always know what to expect. But I try to to do that so people can kind of see what to expect. So let's see what is on the card here. The famous TiVo memory cards. So I'm going to bring that up here. Let's see, is everything? I hope that sound's not too bad. It looks like my sound's coming through pretty well. So let's see here. Tarantula Pro Assembly Manual, yes. So yes, we do have an assembly manual here. And it's... A lot of pages, 45 pages long. Uh, and they label the different layers, layer A, layer B, with uh, with the names. So this could create some problems. So it looks like they want us to start with the bottom frame, A01. Uh, let's see here. <coughs> So this was the bottom, this was the top, so it looks like what they want me to do is take these, maybe, or maybe not, maybe it's not those, let's see. Looks like it's actually these. These will go on top. So I'm going to keep these two areas separate here. It's always good to have some goodies here. So I'm going to put this over here. So I don't need the bed just yet. Um, and then I 
sorry, just trying to see what I'm looking at here because this is not the simplest. Um, the problem here's the problem that I'm running into right at this moment. In the instructions, it shows four dots here, and this has five openings or five holes in it. And I don't want to put the wrong item in, because that could really hose me down the line. Uh, so I'm going to have a look ahead. So those are going to be the going up. One of the, those will be X. And I'm guessing one will be across the top. Oh. So it looks like 32 pages of assembly instructions here. I kind of like this one and I kind of don't like this one because it's it looks like it's in the center which I like but I don't like that it's got that extra hole drilled in it but I'm not seeing anything else that looks obvious like it is what is needed <coughs> Same. you see something's been on this you can see scrapes but it looks like this was I don't know what's been on this before. Um, oh, so I'm guessing this. Okay. I think I see how this goes together now. Just took me a second here. So I knew this went like this. I just wasn't sure. But it looks like that goes in the center with that on top. Okay. Let's see here. So the A01 bag. And this is one of the problems with taking everything out. Here's the A01 bag. <coughs> they actually do a pretty good job of putting these. And I did see this when I put my tarantula together, too. I did the same thing. I pulled everything out. And then I went, ah, crap, I shouldn't have done that. I have everything messed up. But... I kind of knew what I'm doing this time, sort of, you know, relatively speaking, I know what I'm doing. So, what I'm trying to do, so make sure I've got all the right lengths here. Um, so I knew what I was that I was pulling these out. It was probably not exactly what I wanted to do, but I figured it was probably going to be pretty safe for what I needed. Uh, let's see, yeah, these are going to be the long ones. I'll admit this is the first kit printer I've put together since I think, or full kit printer I should say, put together others that had to be instructed, but I don't think I've had to put together one that required this much construction since I put together the um, East 3D Gecko, which is an incredible uh, 
Core XY machine, unfortunately, it sounds like they've gone out of business, which is a travesty. That's a pretty cool machine. Really like that one. Just going to cinch these up a little bit. One, yeah, I think I did that. One more. May have to go away for a second. Oh, look at that. I was afraid of that. Maybe don't like that. There we go. Fly again. I was afraid of getting this worked like that. I was hoping that wouldn't happen. So just as always, just make sure everything's as flat and as straight as humanly possible. Because that'll go a long ways to allowing your prints to print better. There we go. Much better. So now, at once, the bottom. doing here is that's not going to be long enough so it has to be these uh, let's see here this is going to be the top I just put that I thought I felt the twist a little bit are too long because they're actually right the first time. So you want the stainless ones for the bottom here. Looks like. Or I could be wrong here. Nope, definitely not the stainless ones. Sorry about that. So definitely need these black ones because the stainless are too skinny, but these I think are too long.
Let's have it put on. That's kind of a weird way of doing it. I'm not really liking that a whole lot. Just checking this real quick. Let's see here. Uh, so, sorry, I'm looking through this and it's showing This, this is not the right foot, but I don't know. I don't know that these others are correct either. And these are these would be too small to go all the way through, but these are what's required for this. So I need a. M5 by 30, these are M5 by 45s, and the feet are M4 by 20s, so this is slightly smaller. The problem now is that, oh, so that T-nut's right. I think I might have a T-nut that's... See that one, the T-nut slips right through. And there's a good T-nut. And... <coughs> oh, that's right inside. Thankfully, I have some spares, so I'm not too worried about this. It might just be a three-legged printer until I get around to that which will be in just a little while. Uh, let's see if there's any extra pieces in this bag here. I'm guessing this is an extra goodie bag, mainly because it's not labeled anywhere. And I can see one T-nut here, and it's too big. Oh, wait, here's another one. That one's too big as well. Ah, the goodie bag ones are too big. Back in the day, I used to actually sell a kit for the Tivo Tarantula, the old one help build it that had a bunch of spare parts like these T-nuts because the original tarantulas really were desperate for some major upgrades. The acrylic that was that they were built with broke all the time though thankfully superglue did a really good job of fixing it. So like for me I had um, what did I have? I had the Z-stop uh, break on me, but a little bit of glue and it worked fine from there on. Never was an issue. I have a feeling that's a little too big for that. Too small. Oh, there we go. So people tended to print additional pieces. So mine was, my Tivo Tarantula had a lot of 3D printed parts. And then I eventually got with Traula, Traula or something like that, uh, .net. He made some aluminum parts that were freaking out of this world. And I put those on it. He sent me some. 
Um, I was going to review them. I never got around to the review on him, unfortunately, but I know that I sent a lot of people his direction because they were just amazing. Um, amazing, amazing pieces. They looked really good. They worked really well. And um, the aluminum parts, just when you had your, when you had that original uh, tarantula, the, the acrylic worked, but not great. The acrylic was really there to get you to the point that you could print with, uh, print your own parts to replace all their most, all or most of the acrylic. And uh, if you wanted to, you could also spend some, a lot more money, not just some, but quite a bit more money and go to aluminum parts or there's even one company that made carbon fiber parts that made the uh, the tarantula a lot more rigid with some upgrades the tarantulas were actually pretty amazing machines if I do say so myself but it required a lot actually these shall go oh let's see here you know what? I did this wrong now that I'm looking at this. So this is saying to have the ones by the holes, which are the holes are up front, go on the outside rails, and the ones on the back go on, they should go on the ends here. They go on the inside of the rails, not on the outside like I did. Sometimes those little things, just pay attention to them. So anyhow, yeah, the TiVo, the original TiVo tarantula, while it it had issues, don't get me wrong, it's I think for the, at the time it was a pretty amazing 3D printer for the price, but to really get it to work well, it required a lot of elbow grease. So you had to you had to realize that it was going to take you a lot of time and a lot of effort. And I think I probably spent most of my first month owning a 3D printer, just printing upgrades for that stupid printer. Uh, which gets kind of tiring really quick that you know you want to start printing cool stuff for yourself not just upgrades so that your printer will actually print correctly nice if I had some extra parts Not looking forward to having to flip the whole thing up and over to get that on there. Okay. <coughs> so the next piece is going to be taking this, putting it on. I wish I knew where my good... Allen wrench was for this size. Oh, whoops. So on these, it says to use a lock nut or spring washer, not lock nut, but lock washer. And I forgot to do that on those first two. So of course they have plenty of extras of these, but not of that T-screw. It's kind of a pain. Or T-nut, I mean, sorry, T-nut. Okay. So overall, this will be my third 3D printer. I've also had a TiVo Tornado. I 
had a lot of problems with that printer. Uh, the TiVo Tarantula, I was able to upgrade and get it to work pretty good. My buddy's been using it for quite a while now, too. Not sure how long. Actually, it's been about a year, or it's been over a year now, I think. Um, but then I had the TiVo Tornado, and it ended up, uh, anytime heat went to the hot end, it would reboot. I could not figure that out, so I ended up giving it to my father-in-law, because he wanted to get a 3D printer, and uh, didn't really mind repairing it, and he's an engineer, so it's kind of a little bit up his alley compared to mine. So he was able to get it repaired and get it up and going. He ended up having to replace both the power supply and the main board to get it to work, but it works like a champ again. Okay, the front panel assembly. So it looks like this piece will be on my left. And to pull that out, of here, nice aluminum looks like aluminum machine knob. Okay. Oh, I could really use my glasses for this. So this is going to take bag A2. That's going to be this bag. So there's spacers and little bolts on either side. So I'm going to put these back into bag A1. And hope, 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 hope that... Find another Tina. If not, I'll have to get it out of my reserves. Just need to find that box. I haven't haven't had to get into that stuff in quite a while. I haven't actually sold those parts in years. So this uses Tina. These might be easier to actually. These look like the teen ups I need, so I think I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna steal one for this because I think adding one to the side may be a little easier or might not even be absolutely necessary. Nice, but not maybe absolutely necessary for the printer to print well. It'll work fine. Da -da -da, there we go. So these were the ones that go on the outside. Tina's you know, always fun to fun to work with. Let's get them in there. There we go. They're actually not that bad. I've found. I know a lot of people hate them, but I didn't, never had a huge issue with them. I'm not saying they're the easiest things in the world, but they're not super duper hard either. So it looks like these are in 3 by 4 so it's got to be these little black ones. Go on either side. So, comes from the back, goes into the spacer. Like so. Sorry, little holes trying to it'll take a little more concentration, make sure I get it right. Well, I've got a lot of good light in here. It still is a little difficult to to see well. Saying goodnight to my daughter. Sorry. She is going to bed. The household is going to bed now. But I will be up to finish this, I hope. If not, I'll go to bed and finish it tomorrow night. But... Since I'm supposed to be leaving, 
I would like to not have to work on anything tomorrow night. Actually, I probably, if I don't get this done tonight, it probably will be put off until next week to finish up. There we go. And that's on, looks like the SD card. So it's got the reset switch there, the controller there. So it looks like we just put the T-nuts on. We don't even actually assemble this yet. Just kind of put it, whoops, kind of put it together really quick. bag if I can figure out what I did with it. Oops, A2. As we go on to a the next step. There we go. Okay. So now Excuse me, is there a three? <coughs> ah, excuse me. <coughs> and See, like I said, this is the problem with pulling all this stuff out already. I don't know exactly what they're looking for now. It's not that. Pretty sure it's not those. But the one issue that I kind of am running into here is that the piece that they're showing is um, might not be an A at all. So let's see. Let's go up here. Let's see. So this is A03. So that was in the center section. This is the Y axis idler. here and it does not look like it it's the bed ah excuse me let's see here
But I'm wondering if something that's a little more put together, that could be part of it too. I need to get the hot end out of here. I don't need the hot end here. What I'm looking at does not look like any of those pieces. Um, that's an L4. Okay, so I've been looking for this metal piece and guess what I just found the metal piece is actually in the bag it's a lot smaller than I imagined looking on there one of the problems is that by scale everything looks pretty much the same that looks as big as a giant piece so I had no clue. That was that's kind of obnoxious, actually. So, just seeing how this goes together. So it looks like these go here. Just the T-nut on this end here. Just put two of these on. So it looks like this is the aluminum spacer, I hope. And I think this is the bolt. So we put the top bearing on and then the bottom bearing. So it looks like that. And then we put the spacer on. And this needs to be on the same side as the T-nuts. And then it's got a self-locking nut on the bottom, which their picture looks really weird. Hmm. Don't have my Leatherman here. Let's see if this will work in this pinch. If not, I have some channel lock that will work really well. I knew to grab those. I knew to grab them. I thought, eh. It's just I've not, like I said, I haven't put together a full kit printer in forever. So I was not sure what I would need. Should have had that. There we go. So that's working. That, I like the feel of that. Now. Another piece of metal and this one one of the <coughs> stepper motors goes on I don't think it's that one I think it's gonna be one of these two so it's got to be that big
Ow. I believe that is what I'm looking for. Yep, it's got the right hole pattern, it looks like. So, this comes down and it shows, this has the pulley on it, so I don't want to mess with that. So this shows the white on this side, the connector on towards me. It shows this down on the lower left, these two here. Um, it looks like I put the hammer nut, crap. We have the T nuts on this side. There's one done. And there's two done. And there's three done. Oh, no, not done yet. Now there's three done. Okay, so that is correct. So it's like to re recheck over and over and over again. Because I can't tell you the number of times with my original tarantula, and actually on a lot of printers I built, that East 3D Gecko, holy cow. The number of times that I've had to redo things is incredible. I actually have a piece I need to put on that to repair it, the gecko that is. Um, I got a new piece for it and I've never actually put it on and I really need to. So then I could have an awesome XY core XY printer to print with. This thing's a beast. Of course my small room here I kind of need a little bit more room too. It's kind of my hobby room. It's got all my painting and stuff over there. My, and then I've got a my Curon or Chiron Anycubic, the 400 by 400 on it. It's a ginormous thing. Let's see here. So it looks like this goes this direction up. There's, the, there's always a flat on this, so I need to put one of these on the flat. Um, and you see behind me, I've got the Ender 3. It's got a little bit of space over here I could work with. I've got some storage that I could get rid of. And then back here where the resin printers are, I'd actually like to get a bigger bench there so I could put more resin printers there because I've got a longer 3D orange tin to put there with those two. Um, my, this room always seems to get kind of messy and then I get have to get piece or have to get some stuff to clean it up and make it look better. And then it gets messy again and then I have to get things cleared up a little bit better. That just happens from time to time. Okay, so now we're going to do the bed carriage assembly. So this is this piece here. And this is the B02 bag. <coughs> I might put that crowd out of the way. This over here. I'm just trying to move the stuff that I'm not working on kind of out, out of the central area where I am working on stuff. Okay. So this is showing it this direction here. And it shows four lock nuts up. So this, so, let's see if you can see it. Oh, actually. So let's see if you can see. So these here, you can see, are a little bit bigger than the other ones. Uh, these are where your lock washers are going to go. So 
so we'll see how this all goes together. So these are going to go in here. Or I call these lock washers. I meant ex eccentric nuts. Eccentric nuts are going to go there. Okay. So that. Yeah, I had never heard of an eccentric nut until I got into 3D printing. And they're different. So take one of these. We put one of these on. Oh, so these are little. The. Um, what's it called? The washer that's in the center of these was a little off. It's kind of an issue that he had with the original tarantulas. Um, then it says a precision, which is, I'm guessing it's just a washer. And then you go through in the eccentric and then go through that. So I'm going to build both of these. So you just have to get something narrow there to push that push that washer back. And put the washer this washer on. And then this goes pushes through. There we go. <coughs> then these go all the way through here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to grab my Another piece here. Another wrench. Because that's not going to work. Just want this to be snugged up enough that it all comes together. There we go. The key is that these wheels move freely so that it can move up and down the Y axis. that up just a little more to require a lot just a little bit here there we go okay so that's done now for the other side and this just uses a spacer oops have to put the wheel on first There we go. And the spacer. Push that through. And put that on the bottom. Do that for this one. Huh, that one. That's a little weird. This one, the this internal washer does not want to move as easily as it did with the other ones. So from what I kind of gather back in the day, way back in the day, when you first got your tarantula, let me finish it, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm doing this on the right side. Back when you got your tarantula, you actually had to build these rollers. By the time I got mine, they came pre-built. But they still had that one issue where um, 
that washer would kind of move out during shipping. It would rattle around in there. Just getting this all cinched up here in the lock washer or the nylon um, nut and the Y carriage is built. Hmm. Oh, I'll have to adjust the eccentrics to let that work. Oh, it actually wants me to put it on now. And put the idler on the back. Okay. So I need the tools. So if you've never adjusted an eccentric nut, basically they they're a little out of round. So when you're adjusting it, you're you tight on one side it tightens it further as you move it around and the other side it loosens it further and there's different tricks to this and if you how I'm doing it right now is actually tightening a little bit too there we go so so you can see it's got a little bit of a rattle, but on the front side here, it's actually pretty tight. Let's see here. So this back one needs to tighten just a little bit, maybe. Oh, look at that. And maybe a little bit more tight than I prefer. That's a little looser. No, a little too loose. Feeling pretty good. Just gonna. Just kind of playing with it a little bit, just to kind of tweak it in. Just a little, eh, it's a little loose. All right, you want it just snug. There we go. You really do want it just snug, so it doesn't have any play, but it still moves real easy. That's the key with these. Now the idler looks like. Uh, So it's telling me to slide this over here. So it's, you've got these tabs here, and that is where the um, oops. that I believe is where the uh, what's it called? Sorry, I'm just trying to see how this goes. That's where the the um, belt goes for this. Kind of magic how those T-nuts will be all loose and not work and all of a sudden pull right up and work. So it says install the x-axis motor bracket in stop in place. Tighten the bolts. I have no idea what that is, unless they're talking about going to this next spot. So this motor mount goes here. Let me actually flip this over. Show you something once I get these all nice and tight. There we go, get them snug, and now we'll tighten them up. Maybe. Get 
now we'll tighten them up. There's that. I'll tighten those too far. There we go. We'll go back to this one really quick. There we go. So this is where your Y uh, belt's going to go, and that's the idler it's going to go around. So. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to look. It's a little different build than what I'm used to. Um, I oh, I'm looking at this so. I'm looking at this from this perspective for building this. So that looks good. The next picture down reverses it. The way you can tell in these instructions is where the legs are. If the legs are on the inside, you're looking at this front piece. If, you're, if the legs are on the outside, you're looking at this back piece. Um, but what I'm trying to find is where this other goes thing goes. Um, so there's an end piece. Install the X axis motor bracket and end stop in place. And I don't know what that is is the problem Here, let's see if I can show you what I'm looking at it might make it a little easier to understand why this is so confusing. Let's see here. Uh, sorry. I have to create a way for you to see my desktop here. Sorry. I'm still here. Just real quick blank screen while I add the desktop to you. Um, Huh, I thought that that was what I needed. Hey, looky there. Okay, so this is what I'm looking at right here. Now, this piece here, way in the back, just hoping this looks right. It's just now showing up. There you go. Yes. So this little piece right here, basically it says, you know, this is how we get this to work. And this is install the x-axis motor bracket and in stop in place and tighten the bolts. And then loop around the idler. So it's this here. So I'm guessing that this bag... B031 is that because there's three end stops. That's a weird place for an X, so I'm guessing this is actually the Y end stop as well. So that's, it's a little confusing. Um, and I can see the white on it. 
So I'm guessing that this is going to have to go like so. This is actually the first way I consider poor instruction in the instruction set. Everything else has been pretty easy. Hey, back to that. Let's see here. There we go. Now back to now back to the mess. Okay, so it looks like, and I'm guessing that this is going to go something like so. I really don't like just one screw holding this on. This is, I don't think this is a good design at all. Okay, that end stop is in place. Back to instructions. Um, now we're going to put the belt on. <coughs> it says to secure it with ziplets, which is, I guess, a small zip tie. If these are both the same length or not. About the same length, yeah. <clears throat> I always like to try to be careful, not get the wrong items there, you know. So this is going to go around here, like so, and then back up in here. Here. Okay. This is the old tried and true way of securing these, but I've never been a big fan of zip tying these in. Just, this always seemed inelegant. Other companies have, I think, nicer ways of doing them, but once you break them off, or if something happens, you're basically back to zip tying them. So, I guess the, this is a good tried and true way of doing it. So there's that to be said for it. So let's see here. Uh, This is kind of weird to me because it goes around the outside and comes in. I'm used to them being more, um, most of them go through the side of the extrusion. Actually, I would say pretty much all of them go through the side of the extrusion. So it's kind of, it is a weird design to me. Not saying it's bad or anything, it's just literally just weird. It's just different. Hey, somebody else jumped on here. Who's here with me? Because, you know, it's easier to talk with somebody than just, you know, talk to myself. Let's see here. Get 
this up and around there. Oh, actually, maybe they're just here for a second and dropped off looking at it. I'm all alone again. Bummer. little tighter than what this is right now. There we go. Let's see here. Ah, something popped off. popped off it was not put through right so this so it actually needs to be threaded through I think I lucked out on the other one I think I happened to get it to thread through right I thought it was just came around the uh, I, I thought it was a cutout I didn't realize it was a full circle here. Ah, it's very difficult to feed through. There we go. There we go. Crashing and banging. I think my daughter just got out of the shower. Oh, oops. A little distracting. Hearing all the banging going on there in the house. Let's see here. There we go. Oops. That goes like that. Okay. There we go. Just there more. Down like that. Yeah, I guess that'll do. That will do. There we go. And snip that off. And snip that off. And now I have a functional Y axis here. Okay. That always takes a little bit longer than I expect. Okay, here. Let's see here. So get that. Zip tie. Da da. Well, that just shows two zip ties. Eh, I can do two just to help give it double security. I just try to leave a little bit extra on here. Like I'm not, there's not a lot of ex excess of this um, belt. Let's try to leave a little extra on here just in case something happens and you have to clip these off. Let's 
So I don't know if you can see here. I've only got a little piece here and a little piece there on both sides. That's all that's really needed. You don't need a lot of extra belt hanging around. <clears throat> the more things that are dangling off your printer, the more things that can lead to failures. Don't want those dangly bits. It's just not good on a printer. Speaking of which, you should see the mess that my old tarantula was. Holy cow, when I first was finished with it, all the cables going everywhere. Uh, cable management on the original tarantula was a bear. Holy cow, man. It was very difficult. Okay. So now, it looks like we get to flip this over. And we're going to put in the control board. So, this is showing as something like this. And... Sorry, I just realized this fell down. And this is what I need next. Wow, that is a total mess right there. Okay. Not too big of a deal to clean it up, but hey, it's still a total mess just sitting there. Um, let's see here. So this is, goes like so. see how this is saying to go on oh it's using a t-nut that's what's confusing so there's an extra uh, opening right here so you could put a screw in there but I and that's what I thought this what I needed to do but it looks like what you want to do is actually put this under here T-nut. Hmm. Bag A04. Missed that part originally. A04. There we go. Some of these instructions are a little on the odd side. I'm thinking that how I've got this set up is how it's supposed to be. I'm not 100% sure that this is going to be correct, but I think this is. So. This will go like so. 
this goes like so. And this slides up like so. I'm gonna since there's only one bolt holding them, I'm actually gonna use in this extrusion to hopefully give it a little bit more strength, maybe. Wow, there's like no it's Same, you know, weird. Wish this was a little shorter. Wish this bolt was just a little shorter because it doesn't quite. Quite grab well. Okay. Um, let's see here. Okay, so actually, it looks like I did this on the wrong rail. If I would have scrolled down a little ways, I would have seen that it looks like you actually slide this this way. are held on on the back in this extruder and extrusion there we go and the power supply will go on the other side it looks like Trying to see how this is all built compared to other like the industries. It's weird having the Y up front. I think that's the front. It's where the Y motor is. That's just weird to me to have that motor in the front. There we go. Whoa. Oh, looks like it actually comes with a little bit of filament, too. So, no shaking or rattling. Uh, let's see here. It uses, looks like it's got an XT60 connector. It's got a rocker switch in the back, which is kind of nice. I'm going to check the output. Make sure it's right for me usually there's a switch you have to hit to adjust between 110 and 220 
there's one area I can't get to here. I'm going to take this apart just to have a quick look. Just to see what's behind the curtain here. Wow, that was not put in well. Just trying to figure out where that switch might be. See, there's two screws there. I don't have to mess with it. Maybe I don't have to mess with it. Should be a first time for everything, I guess. Huh. Okay. I'm covering up the right stuff again. Let's see here. Give me a second here. There we go. And there we go. That's back together. So let's hope this actually will work okay. If not, thankfully I'm an American. I'm not too worried since I'm on 110 and not putting 220 through a 110. I'll be putting 110 through 220 if it doesn't figure that out itself so I know I'm on the safe side being from being in America here Thankfully, they have pretty decent pictures, albeit some of them are very small. This is not a good, that was not a well, well built bolt there. So we can get, get enough of the other ones, there we go.
Now we put the front plate on. Looks like it's starting to look like a real printer. Spread that out a little bit. These are not grabbing. I think it's just they're not spinning free. There we go. Grabbing right. There we go. <clears throat> oh my gosh, so much more to do. Okay. So now we have the hotbed assembly. It looks like I'm not sure, yeah. Then we're on page 18. Install the hotbed, tighten the nuts. Just some turns, as these are used later to, yeah, just the bed. Um, okay. So this is probably going to go that way. Let's say it's an insulated bed. We have a little bit of stress relief here. Not a ton, but it's kind of better than what the other ones had. Oh, there's plastic here. Let's get this off. Oh man. Get off of the piece. Here we go. There we go. Plastic cover off. Ah, brushed aluminum. I love the look of brushed aluminum. It's one of the prettier things out there. Okay. So this is B02 1. B02 1. This bag is up two. E zero two dash one. Oh. Oh yeah, I didn't even notice that. They've got big thumb nuts. So this was another upgrade for the original tarantula you wanted to print because they would eat the heck out of your thumbs. They're the ones they had. These are a little on the small side. I prefer I might end up printing larger ones. I like uh, I really do like these pretty much the biggest you can get them so this is one I printed for some other printer um, I'm trying to look over at my other printers which one this may have been uh, I think this is for my CR10 actually I'm just curious if it would fit it looks like it would fit um I really like the size, that size, but these are going to be plenty large as well, so I'm not really complaining by any means whatsoever. <coughs> Excuse me. So putting these springs on.
I always hate trying to get these on. This is the one area where I think having the original one's a little easier before you put the big print on. Seems like you put the big print on, it knocks it all out of whack trying to get it level to start screwing on. And then, you know, because you've got the springs and everything, you're not straight down, so you're just you're trying to compensate for that. And it's just kind of a pain in the butt to try to try to do. Righty tighty, lefty loosey, and I was doing that right. It's like starting to get a little concerned for myself there. Yeah, you would not think this would be as hard as this is. There we go now. I'm gonna try the other side first. Oh, thank God. Yay. Actually, I think I started, I was trying to twist it the wrong way on that side. And I didn't realize it. Okay, we have the bed on. Holy cow. Mm. Wow, there's a lot more to do here. <clears throat> like I said, it's been a very long time since I built a kit printer. This is kind of, kind of a little bit horrifying here. <clears throat> Let's 
Let's uh, just look at some stuff really quick. Okay, here. Symbol, the left side, B0. So it looks like we're away from that for a little while. Um, so now we're going to assemble the motor mount in piece. So, is it this? Yeah, it looks like this. If I'm not mistaken, oh. So if I'm not mistaken, it's already assembled, but symbol, but it's not on the bar yet. Trying to see how this all goes together, and also trying to figure out what um, what bolts this is. Oh, bag B zero three B zero three dash one. I'm gonna need B zero seven. I'm going to need E03. Screws B03. Oh, there's a lot of screws here. <coughs> hmm. Okay, so M5 by 15. Thinking it's going to be these little guys here. With M5 spring washers. I've always heard them called lock washers. Let's see. Yes, I think we'll need. And the next one. Let's see. So let's see how this is going. I'm just checking my audio here. I'm going to pull that up just a little bit. Okay. So get these secured onto this. Motor. I think we want 
that to go down. Word. I hope. Oh, okay. So what it is, is there's two small ones that go here on the top, right here and here, maybe. Okay. So yeah, these two go here on the top. And then on the bottom <coughs> is this. So this is going to be the end stop. And it's the three end stops. And this is the bigger of the three end stops. But it goes on the bottom here, and there's longer ones that go through that. So I think the end stops may be made with a, a thick acrylic, though there's no paper on them. That's a little disconcerting. So one of the keys with with this stuff is don't over tighten it if that is acrylic. I don't know for sure if it is or not, but if it is. Don't over tighten it. That creates, that makes it crack. And was the bane of many, many of our existences that had the old Tivo tarantulas. So you want the pulley to be up, once again, looking for where the flat is in relationship to the, um, to these bolts, or to, uh, to these, yeah, to these bolts that go in here, these set are these yeah, these set bolts here or set screws just to make sure it's set in there good and I think that is everything on here now to the next piece now we're gonna do this so it comes up under it Um, and I think it's going to be these, actually. This is kind of weird how they're doing this. So I think I can't say I really like this, but we're going to try this. Actually, what am I doing? Mainly I'm doing it this way. I'm going to put all of them on at once because of how small this is. I think this may actually work. <clears throat> By small, I meant how small this, the center hole is and the distance between them because I need to put this uh, lock washer on each shaft. <clears throat> This goes on up through. Whoops. Darn it. Okay, that didn't work as well as I'd hoped. Uh, let's grab these other two. Okay. Okay. 
So I need to get these lined up and get just enough space to put the nut on, hold them. It's really not quite enough there. If I, well, since that's not working, I'm going to see if I can get a couple of these started. And then sneak that one in. That will be kind of painful, I think, but I'll try it. See how it'll work. Let's see. we go get that and then one more down here and now let's see if I can get this to work like I wanted to Wow, this is not easy here. And I don't know what exactly I did here. Second god just was not going through. This would be so bad if these weren't magnetized. <laughs> there we go. Aha. Got it. There we go. That was, well, okay, I'm not out of the woods yet, so I have to get this on. Okay, that was kind of painful. So just getting these all taut. You don't want to do that. That's not good. Okay, 
just get this all kind of firmed up here. There we go. There we go. That is locked and ready to go. Oh, that's a little rough on the back there. I'm trying to get that in. Okay, right side and hot and assembly. Oh, so didn't use those screws yet. I didn't even have to use this one yet. I think that'd be later, maybe. <clears throat> so I'm thinking. Yeah, this is going to be. Let's see. Da -da. Oh, bag B0402. This is a 3D printed piece here. Um, so now we're looking at this. And I'm trying to see how this goes. Um, Hmm. I'll tell you right now that these are not the right parts for what I'm doing. Even though it shows bag B04-2. That's not the right bag. So Let's see here. that's for the right side so this is so the step is right side and hot end assembly this piece here I believe is the hot end assembly that's what I'm looking at here actually I don't need this for the time being so I think it's B0401 is what we want again we have these with that washer in the center that just needs recentered not a huge deal just real quick Run through that really quick. Um, and these, so these top two are going to come through, go through a spacer, go through the wheel, and then go on a lock nut. And eccentric's going to go in that bottom piece there. <clears throat> so we'll do that again for the other side. Bolt, spacer, it's this, about the size of the um, eccentric nut, basically. Huh. The washer moved. There we go. Wheel, and then nylock nut. Then on this one, we come in on the other direction. So we're going to come directly into the wheel. And then we go into the washer, or go into a washer. And then we go into the eccentric nut. And that goes into the gap. And then we go into the lock nut. <clears throat> there we 
go. And darn it. Okay. had any idea how many black cords were down here. Oh. There we go. Just realized one of the my gas lens tires were down there too. Got that the other day. Couldn't find it. These days I really should do a video for all the Gasland stuff that I've printed. Uh, there's a lot of great modelers out there. Sable Badger to Corvus to Hayland. Oh my, John Hayland's got some amazing stuff. This one wheel's a little rough. I'm not a big fan of that. Take that apart just to have a quick look at it. Oops. Oh my. this all put together. Hmm. Still a little rough. I don't think it's going to be enough to cause any issues. The other one's going to run nice and smooth. And this is just a little chunky. It might wear out a little quicker. That's not a huge deal. I've got spares of those. Uh, let's see here. So this is showing this facing me, and then it shows this on the back side. Then the eccentric nut I can't feel that chunkiness now. Just adjusting this wheel just a little bit. Yeah, it's a little looser. I like that feel a little smoother. <coughs> so this little tab is facing down. So I think this is correct. Okay, so now the right side in assembly. Okay. So this is going to be bad. So this is bag B04. Whoops. I was going to record those in there. So this is bag B0401, but I'm not really sure what all these pieces are. So I'm going to move these back to here because those obviously were not supposed to be used for that step. Okay. So B04 is going to look at this. So this part goes down. And we're looking at... Oh, actually, this is going to be facing up, basically, I think. And we look at this... This and this. I think this is going to be eccentric. So 
going to come in on the back side. Just start with the eccentric nut. Oops, through the slot, not the opening. Put the eccentric nut in. Put the precision shim, as they like to call it, in. I call them the washer. That's going to be real tight there. <coughs> I just hate to tighten nylon nuts that far. Okay. So basically, the, the bolts are going to come in on the back side on all of these. I'm going to use a spacer. Maybe a bigger spacer. Some of these. And it's going to wash through this little off. It wasn't on the other one. I checked them. That's the reason why I used that one. And then we use the lock. No, come on. And one last one, that, the spacer, that, and the lock washer. These all tightened up. Sorry, this night wears on. It's quarter after 11 at my time now. It's starting to get a little punchy here, so sorry about that. Not as talkative as I normally would be. Okay. So I'm looking at it like this and coming in on the back side is this plus these two things plus a spacer this is what that smaller spacer was for and then that small nut That is built. Now it looks like on this, this mounts like so on the front. with these T-nuts going in the back.
Okay. Ah, there we go. So two nuts are on. They're going to slide in. Like so. go wow did I screw that up these are gonna slide in like on this side like so there we go that'll work much better okay so that's basically done <coughs> Move stuff on here to move my legs a little bit. Lifting my head just a little bit. So now I have a very confusing looking isometric drawing from hell here. Um, this basically is coming from underneath somehow. And it's trying to show that these Pressing these down. I'm trying to compress these down a little bit to give it a little bit more stability, the bed a little bit more stability while I work on things. Okay, there we go. Um, Bag B01, which is, I think, the bag that I already used stuff out of. B01. Okay, it's not the one that I used stuff out of already. So these are basically all going to be the same thing. It's two that are going to go up into this, let's see how this is built. This is kind of throwing me a little bit, not in a good sort of way. It is, these are supposed to be kind of in the back, so.
Hmm. So I really messed up here. This and this are supposed to be on the bottom, and they're on the top for me. So to flip them, if I undo this and this, these, this may work. So here's what I did wrong on this. There are some wide spots. Um, and I actually talked about it. I thought that I had it right. I was trying to be very, very careful about this because I knew that this would be a spot that would bite me if I was not careful. <sighs> okay. So, um, honestly, I think that I think I would have done this front piece later had I known how this worked anyways so this over The problem with doing this like this is if you were, if you remember in the very beginning, the printer was not exactly level when I was done with this step the first time. This is not going to make it any that actually. So what I did, so now I think I see what I did wrong. So they're, they're counter sunk. So this can go in all the way. And I had this right this way, but it's, it needs to go on that side over there. That's, that's the real problem. Oh, this sucks. At least it's not horrifying, too horrifying to fix this all up. It's just not exactly simple either.
Okay. So. This one. Like so. Correct. Yes, yes. Hoping, at least on this side, by putting this in, since that was already squared up at one point, that this is all going to be squared up now. That's what I'm hoping for. I still can't believe I did this. Uh, what a royal pain in the derriere. I will admit, I almost thought about ending this, this stream for the night right with that, because it's like, oh no. But I figured I'd stick it out. So I really am pretty close. I just have to get the upright on. Um, a couple other things. Actually, I feel like I'm pretty darn close right now to being done. Despite this one setback. Come on. I'm going to get so many of these stupid wrenches out here, you start losing them too. See, when I do that, these get nice and flat, which I really like. No major gap there. Okay. Looks like we got a cat trying to get in that door. Yep, we got a cat trying to get in. Either in here or into. Yep, into here. He likes me. What can I say? He's a twisted kitty cat for liking me so much, I think. He actually belonged to my mother-in-law, and we went down to their farm 
and him and my son, who at the time was only like one, got along really well. It's kind of funny because he was born right around the same time as my son. He was just around one as well for the kitty cats. So, whoops. <clears throat> so we ended up bringing him home. And our other cat that was already home, she was not pleased. But over the years, I think she's learned to tolerate him. But he's, she's kind of old fuddy-duddy. He likes to play, and she's not a big fan of playtime anymore. She's, like I said, old fuddy-duddy. But he's also very cuddly and adventuresome. He's very much an adventuresome cat. He likes to go out. He likes to escape outside. No matter what we try to keep him in, how hard we try to keep him inside, he still usually sneaks out a few times a week. But him and my son actually get along pretty well. My son is now three, he's three. And <clears throat> he puts up with a lot from my three year old. Which is really nice. Okay. So, we're back to this step. And let's see if this works. I can't. I still can't believe I did that upside down, and I know that looking at the instructions, that is an issue. And I tried to. I I actually did try to make sure that was right, but to no avail. down And there we go. both tightened up. There we go. And look at that. Now it's really starting to look like a little printer. Now I need to build out this. This does not look like a taller version. Whoops. Um, slot B7. B7. 
seven. I guess I need to put this back on too, don't I? I'm looking at that with this, the green plate, and I'm like, oh, I'm looking at the back. Wait a second. Make sure in the front. Oops. Come on. There we go. Okay. So now turn this around and look at it back. <sighs> D07 again that I'd started uh, that I pulled out before which I don't know why they recommend pulling it out then Flathead, not Phillips, but it looks like it's working. So I will say one other thing. Um, I kind of messed up a little bit in pulling these out. I wasn't sure which part these came out of. So, okay, I'll be right back. I need to use the restroom. I'm about ready to die right now. So I'll be right back.
I'm back. Sorry about that. I was just about ready to die there. Holy cow. Okay, so this is going to go on the right side. Facing, oh, actually I need to do one more of these. all situated. There we go. Now, I have to get the coupler on. And it has an O-ring that goes in the top. Or top. I don't think I've ever seen an O-ring go into one of these before. May not have ever noticed it either. There's always that chance. So, again, looking for the flat side. bottom there so that I can put the lead screw in the top. <coughs> okay. So now to get this plastic off. do that. Seems like a pretty small lead screw. Okay. Let's see. Finally reached the actual metal. I have no idea how they wrap that. Can't get the whole thing. Actually, I probably should start tossing that. Let's see. <sighs> Holy cow. Come on. Jeez, uh, you grimy. If there's any hope I can get this under here to get this clipped.
Oh, that was a nice chunk there that I just pulled off. Almost there. Holy cow. Who would have thought getting a lead screw out would be one of the hardest parts of this whole process? Ow. You know what? I was really trying to avoid stabbing myself. It's nice to check the lead screw, make sure it rolls nice, and it did. <clears throat> Actually, what am I doing? I want to put this on first, I think. I screwed up. I'm going to do one other thing. Let me check if I do this. Just the um, uh, eccentric nuts on these just so that I can make sure I've got a clean shot. What I'm doing is I'm making sure all three wheels are moving. This one is not. There we go. Now, 
That knocked this one out for a little bit. Now this one's not, there we go. So, just had to do that little bit of a tweak on the eccentric nuts just to clean up the play there. A good chance it would have printed just fine without that, but by doing that, helps make sure the tram is a little closer to zero. Stuff like that. That's what I'm really trying to do when I'm building the tunnel. Um, I'm trying to zoom off this. Now I think it's showing is something like so. I didn't realize the extruder was actually built on here. Interesting. Actually, no, I just messed up here. So no, this is this is what I was expecting. It's just a really bad view. <clears throat> so at some point, we're supposed to put the um, extruder on as well and I don't really actually see any, any time that we're supposed to do this okay but I don't know what um, P07 is done is it too big it's way too long Wonder if one of the one of these things that are left over are used for this. Looking at the hot end assembly now. And B04 2. Parts. Oh, this is for the lead screw brain. So I think I'm going to come back to the extruder. So I don't think getting that on right now is going to matter a whole lot. So the last major step of building this is going to be. these on. And back to bag B01 it looks like. Oh, I think I might see an issue here. I'm binding these up a little bit because this is adjustable. So 
So let's try this like so. What I did is I just loosened this piece um, spring washers on this. little jig but I found that it works magic so we set it there now bring this down here Now we know we're squared up here. And you can actually feel around the extrusions and feel that, yes, we are all squared up. You know what? Now we're back. I better check audio. Let's see audio. Are we good? Yeah. Looks like my audio is still good. Okay. So we'll get this. And down there. Times like this, I wish I had two of these. Let's see if this will fit. That one on, that one on. Ah, we just hit midnight. I'll loosen this up, maybe just a little bit. Does it? There we go. One more on this side. And let's get this here going. go. Okay. Let's see how these are. Let's just tighten it just a tad more. There we go. And now we have it all together. For the top piece, um, let's 
So now it says to type in these now. Now that we've got this, I can see that. So I was pulling it together without these really being there. So trying to see what else is in the box that still needs doing. Okay, nothing in the box. So what I'm looking for is I don't know if this is it or I need a different bag. So I'm going to run into issues where um, I am needing parts, but I don't know that I have them. So B0402 is I think, and then I need two. thinking that they cha might have changed this possibly or okay that can't be it so I'm thinking it might be this print Has to be one of these. I think it's I think it's kind of process of elimination. I've kind of come to this one here. This is kind of a chintzy way of doing it. This is to hold the um, screw in place up top. And I'm sure that this is actually kind of optional. But I'll try to do it anyways because it's part of the instructions. And then, depending on binding issues like that, I may end up having to pull it out. Because all of these are meant to do is hold that in, it looks like. It's not actually started. It's actually kind of a pain in the butt to get started there. that one, then this one, there we go, and 
There's that. And then there's that. There we go. Let's try to get this all done. It's hoping to be done by midnight. That's not happening how it looks like. There we go. Okay. So I can tighten those now, which it's already done. Now we need to tie the oh, this on. <laughs> Hmm. You have to kind of feed this through over because, you know, I wasn't thinking and that doesn't work. I was trying to do it. on there. And bring this around. Up and around. Like so. Look. 
this. Uh oh. Okay. Get that cinch down. There we go. Now, I believe I could just do this. Drop the wrench. Actually, no, I can't do it there because those are locked into place. I have to do it on the other end. I forgot. I don't have a lot of play on this one. Spring deals to. Eh, nah, that's good enough actually. I'd like it to be a little more taut. I can handle that. And then our last piece of resistance will go over here. This says it should be. There we go. So that's the last of the end stop. Okay. Oh. Yeah, this is this is actually for the top end. This is the last little piece here. This is one ginormous hot end, I'll give it that. Okay, so it's not going to stay zip tied up and reach where it needs to. Okay. Bag B401. There we go, B401. need to go this has to go up so this the shelf goes above it oh, what a pain the butt to try to get into glad I have these because using theirs which are shorter than this 
tray would be a royal pain in the derriere. Oh, come on. There we go. Tight. And oh, this mounts under it, so I think it's showing that crazy. Oh, that's what those cutouts are for. Those cutouts on both sides. Go and one over here and one over here. And there we go. Get these all tightened up. I felt like it went all the way down. Now, for this last piece, This could be them because I think there's three, and if I remember right, yeah, they only hook up, only go through, through with three. So it looks like it's bag B03 has the long screws needed for the extruder.
There we go. So I think that's it. So one thing I find interesting, they go through Slicer. Um, I'm not sure what Slicer that is. Uh, let's see here, bed leveling. They actually don't talk about whatsoever how to hook the cables up. That's kind of crazy, in my opinion. So this is a super long cable. I think I'm gonna plug this in. Just like so. If I put something up above to secure it. see how I can do some cable management on this. I actually can get it running tonight. I'm much, much too tired for that. But I do want to get it plugged in, ready to go basically. I'm not sure which one of these is going to be plugged into which one. Let's see here. Here's the bed. Bed's pretty simple. No, it still is pretty simple, but it's on this side. One thing I do like about this is that the path for the filament doesn't go right by the lead screw. It actually goes a little ways up here. So that's actually kind of nice compared to a lot of these. Okay, now. That plugs in there. I have, oh, that's why. I was like, I have no idea what this is, but it actually is labeled. It's labeled with a Y. This is the Y motor, whoops. Like, that's not looking right.
I have to admit, it is weird having the Y up front. It really is just an odd position to me. Unfortunately, I undid the zip tie that had been on this. Let's so slide that back in there. There we go. Okay. Here's the extruder. I'll just free this one and let them all hang out. Oops. Okay. So Z stop. And Z motor, I'm guessing it's gonna be Z motor. I actually kind of like these little clips. Actually, it'd be nice to get for all my printers. Why stop? Snip this, but I don't see any other way, unfortunately. <sighs> what a shame! What a shame! Is this Y in stop really needs to go out this side, not that other side. It needs to reach the end stop. X and X, that's where I want it here, and E for extruder. And that goes over there. Okay, all the major cables are now accounted for. Um, the other one. It'll either turn on or not, and if it doesn't, just swap the cables back and forth. So I'm not really too worried about that. But, knowing my luck, this is probably going to be the wrong side. You know what? I have a cable. 
let's see if we can get it to fire up. What the heck? I actually pulled it out just in case. It's flashing, but nothing's coming out. One more time. Tarantula Pro. What do you know? Let's see. look at this. It it's alive. It's actually alive. So that's what it looks like. So I still have a ways to go with this. I still have to tweak some stuff like um, you can see that the Z is sitting literally on the bed right now. So I have to adjust or the, the X, you know, the extruder sitting on it. I'm going to have to adjust where the Z is. Uh, a little bit of cable management because I don't know what to do with this cable here right now. Um, I'm just really not sure what to do with it because it's so long. I could run it up under here, I suppose. It's, I'm, I'm just looking at how the Ender 3 is set up. Um, I'm just trying to see how my other printers might be set up. It's just kind of a weird setup. Um, so yeah, there's going to be some cable management issues. It's, you know, it's not quite as clean as some of the other ones. Like, the other ones have, you know, pieces in front of them to cover the stuff up. This one's a little more open to the elements. I can't show you what's going on. But on the flip side, it makes it probably a lot easier to work on, too, because you know where the issues are. So yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. So it turns on, so that's a good sign. Um, always glad that to see it. Oh crap! There we go. Always glad to see it work. Um, after I get it booted up, uh, I can actually tell you what the draw rate is on it. It's. Make sure it's nothing crazy. Uh, it's two watts draw right now. Not that bad. So there is the build of the uh, Tarantula Pro. Uh, I want to say thank you to uh, Banggood again for sending this to me for review. Um, I'm going to bang that out over this probably this next month. Um, I've got a couple things going on. It probably actually might be a month and a half. I've got a family reunion to go to plus I'm going to my buddies later this week uh, so it'll put me a little bit behind on getting some of this stuff done that I'd like to get done but it'll it should still I should still still be able to get this done pretty quick um, I'll try to get some prints done get them posted on my on makerfun3d.com see how that uh, comes out uh, and talk about the printer a little bit as time goes on you know some of my experiences with it so thank you for watching this. I hope uh, you learned something with this. This is one heck of a build. I've been working on this for quite a while now. I'm not even sure how long. Oh, three and a half hours. That's actually not too bad. I heard this was about four hours. So doing it live, three and a half hours, I think 
pretty uh, respectable. So again, thank you to Banggood for sending this to me. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is the Tiva Tarantula Pro, which kind of brings me full circle in my 3D printing world because this was the, the original tarantula. was the first 3D printer that I owned and was the 3D printer I used for probably a good year before I start, I got uh, the CR10S and then expanded to other printers. And now I've got all sorts of printers around the room and it's kind of interesting to try them all. Um, but yeah, so this is the printer. Um, and watch for uh, reviews and previews on um, MakerFun 3D and the various 3D printing um, Facebook groups. Have a good night.